What's up everybody, welcome back. This time around, we're gonna work on Rusty, my 1932 Ford five window coupe. He's been sitting for a whole year and I need to get through and clean out the carbs and check the oil, some tire pressure, other general maintenance items, just because he's been sitting a little long to get him up and running. Now I'm gonna to have to overdub most of the video because I bought this Amazon microphone attachment for my phone and do vlog and I'm new at this so it is what it is but the audio is all jacked up so I'm gonna to have to go on ahead and over you know voice over most of it but won't be terribly long but just follow me along as I go and get them running and get them ready for the year so here's my 1932 Ford five window coupe professionally known as rusty and here is also my youngest daughter 11 years old, her name's Jules. Say hi, Jules. My dad built this car 30 years ago. He was a rusty, crappy body that had a really bad channel job and a really bad chop job. He had brought it back, had to make the doors, lower door skins, make the quarter panels, fix the roof chop, just to get it all squared away and make it a usable body the body is all steel the hood the hood sides the hood tops whatnot it's four piece hood it's all steel the grill shell is steel the doors are steel the fenders running boards deck lid are all fiberglass that's all we can get at the time they didn't have any good usable steel body parts way back when so that's kind of what we had to roll with how to use the fiberglass it works out well you can see there's a Uga horn, original style bumper, uh, original style mirrors. It's got wheel vintage wire wheels. We're still using the original style tail lights and the bumper. It does have a stainless steel tank in it. You can see it still has big style headlights, still has a big style crossbar where it are hanging a plate on it. You can check out the windshield. The chop is so low that it's only six inches from the center of the crown to the top. We still have cow lights on it, mirrors on it. All in all, it's a good looking car. Short of the chop, it looks like a stock car. The interior still looks great for this age. We use the tan tweed, black carpets. It's got a GM column, Monte Carlo SS seats, G-body really. They've been modified and shortened, tracks have been shortened a bit to make it fit in a car. Using Stuart Warner gauges, kind of all old school gauges. Uh, you can see there's a little Chevy bow tie there and a horn button just to let you know what's under the hood. We're rolling with a low car shifter just to, just to get it shifted. The Drivetrain is a small block Chevy. It's a 350 Chevy, 30 overbore, tunnel rams, small comp cam, two Holly 450 carbs. It's got a turbo hydromatic 400 for a trans, about a 2800 stall converter. We have a Ford nine inch, four links and coilovers for the rear. The front suspension is a dropped I-beam with the original style buggy spring. Those rubber bumpers will be used for the ends of the hoods. I've never put them on, and you're supposed to have little rubber bumpers in there for the hood, but we'll get that sorted in a later video. Pop it up, you can see the engine. Running headers, old school, kind of like Offenhauser fin valve covers, a old school Excel distributor, a coil. In the end, the, the, the distributor has no vacuum advance, and it, it does lend a, some crappy drivability problems so i'm going to upgrade it and use a vacuum advanced distributor just to help it out a little bit but all in all he fires up really good runs really good everything's all old school i had animals making a nest in there in a tunnel ram as you can see but once we get it running and get them going we can clean it all up the radiator is an aftermarket, huge four-core deal, electric fan with a temp thermostat, just to keep them cool. It's got three-inch exhaust coming right out, to the, right out the back. 
There are old Dynamax Ultra Flows, I believe. I, I kind of I can't remember, honestly. And he doesn't sound terribly bad. The battery's trunk mounted. Uh, it does have power brakes, manual steering, using a Vega box. But all in all, he's a fun car to drive. Get about 70, 80 mile an hour. Doesn't steer too well, doesn't stop too well, but still a fun car. Get Rusty revived and running for the summer. I'm going to take the carbs apart and just go through them and clean them. I'm not going to pull them off the ton of rams, but I am going to pull the front and rear bulls off. I'm going to pull the power valves out. I'm going to look through it and just generally inspect it. I like to use a paint cap or any kind of other rattle can cap and pull one of the lower bull screws out. If there is fuel in there, typically those larger paint caps will hold whatever's in the fuel bowl. This way here, you don't make a huge mess everywhere. I have a bunch of pig mat in the shop here, so I used a pig mat and lay that all over the intake and valve covers just to keep fuel from getting everywhere. If you're one of them guys that's got real shiny valve covers and crap like that, it'll help keep it from messing up your shine. Rusty, he doesn't really care. Got both rear car bulls off the secondary side, and here's the secondary meter and block. And a lot of times when the fuel dries up, there'll be all kinds of white crust and just residue left at the bottom of the passages. And at the very bottom there, there's usually two holes that get clogged up too. So we're just gonna clean that off with some brake clean or some two plus two and blow it out with some compressed air, get the blocks all cleaned up and put them back on the carb. The gaskets look good. So there's, there's nothing further really to do there. Here we'll take the float. And the float typically for a quick factory setting, you turn a float bowl upside down and, and have to float so the bottom of it is parallel with what will be the top of the float bowl. Get it set up, get the screws tight, slap back together. You fire it up, get the fuel bowls filled up and when the engine's warmed up on a level surface, you can get through and set the floats and usually be good to go. Finishing up the secondary side of both carburetors. I'm going to shut the hood, get it out the way. Roll on to the other side, do the primary side. The primary side has got the fuel inlets, so there's going to be an extra step or two. But all in all, the carbs have been empty, the fuel bowls have been empty. It was just a little bit of white powder and residue that we need to clean out. 
So I don't anticipate any kind of large problems. On the primary side where the power valves are at too, so assuming the power valve diaphragms are good and the accelerator pump diaphragms are good, then I should be able to just fill the bowls up and rusher should be able to just fire right up. Car bowls are all cleaned up, no real problems. Button it up, pre-fill the carburetors through the vents with some fuel, and give him a couple cranks and see if he fires up. Gonna need some fuel. Rusty sounds great. Then you go check the tire pressure. Well, it's good to double check everything. Looks like that crossover tube. And now it's actually going to float the float screws so you can. Oh, well, let's give it another whirl.
alive. Here being dormant. 1932 Ford. He's running again. A couple more maintenance items, and he's good to cruise. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope it wasn't terribly long or super duper boring. Hit me up in the comments. Get on Instagram. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what you think and other kind of projects here at the Mountain Garage. I mean, I've got a whole bunch of stuff coming up that I would love to make video of that I'm planning on making video of and would like to get it out there. Hopefully, you guys dig it. Hopefully, it's fun. Uh, we'll try and get some other crap, but hit the like, hit the subscribe, get me up in the comments, hit the unlike, whatever, whatever the hell floats your boat. Just let me know what you think, and we'll see if we can't make it a little bit better. Hopefully, the videos get better. Hopefully, the production gets a little bit better, but... As I get started and try and get that content out here from the Mountain Garage, it's bound to get better, right? I mean, unless I suck and it just totally sucks. But, hey, it is what it is. Thanks a lot. Thanks for checking it out. See you later.